the early 1990s at Miami International Airport. The airport, located near Miami, Florida, in the United States, had been hitting some rough patches. At the start of the decade, the two main long-time key carriers, Pan American Airways and Eastern Airlines, shut down their operations. Eventually, they got new carriers operating there, but it was a rough time. But a few years after Eastern and Pan Am went bankrupt, a new airline sprung up at Miami Airport. This airline was ValueJet, who, unbeknownst to everyone at the time, would go down as one of the most dangerous and terrible airlines in human history. In the 90s, the low-cost airline boom would cause new low-cost airlines to spring up all around the country. Many airlines jumped into this trend. Well-known airlines like Southwest began as a low-cost airline. Among these was ValueJet. ValueJet started operating out of Miami in 1993. It offered ultra-low fares for routes like Atlanta to Orlando, Jacksonville, and Tampa. As a result, ValueJet quickly caught on as a favorable choice for tourists who wanted to save expense for the travels. But trouble started brewing in the airline immediately after takeoff. Hail me, come on, for old time's sake. Hail me, little man. No. Hail me. Come no. Just a little hail, just a little hail, please. Fuck off, Hitler. <laughs> well, to start off, Value Jet's financial model was problematic, to say the least. To achieve the ultra-low cost fares, they needed to cut many things. For instance, pilots were paid very low and had to pay for their own training, as well as flight attendants. They also infamously bragged about how terrible they treated their customers and their employees. If an airline brags about treating their customers like shit, then it's not gonna end well. Simply put, because of the business model, they nickel and dimed everything. D despite this, their customers kept coming since the fares were low. To say ValueJet was a dangerous airline though, would be an understatement. The airline had 129 emergency landings on its record from 1994 to 1996. 15 in 1994, 57 in 1995, and 57 from January through May 1996. Do you see that? Oh, 50 emergency landings are one per week. They were making one emergency landings per week. Most of the time, airlines have a few emergency landings per year. Because of this, the military denied value at a contract to fly the personnel. Oh man! Among the many list of incidents Valjet had includes one where a Valjet plane in erupted into flames after landing. Luckily nobody was hurt or killed. Another incident was when a plane was flying with 40 hydraulic lines for 140 flights. For context, hydraulic lines are basically the bloodline of airplanes. Without hydraulic lines, you lose every control you have over the plane except for the engines. There have only been four incidents where a plane lost hydraulic lines. One of them crashed into a mountain, the other reached an airport and made a crash landing, and the last two managed to land safely. So basically, your chances of surviving are 50-50. By the way, both of the planes that made it back are coincidentally DHL planes, which I find very interesting. So, landing without hydraulic fluid is a challenge. And although there are systems that allow you to land a plane without hydraulic lines, these systems aren't employed in any commercial airlines. So unless you have experienced crews at the controls, you're screwed. But this wasn't their biggest fuck up. Their biggest fuck up was ValueJet Flight 592. On 
On the 11th of May 1996, a Vayujet DC-9 was preparing for its flight. The flight, was boarding passengers, was also boarding company-owned cargo. Among this cargo were oxygen canisters and suppliers. The plane left Miami International Airport and made its way towards its destination. Seven minutes after departure, the crew realized that the plane was on fire. Three minutes later, communication ceased and flight 592 crashed into the Florida Everglades. It was later revealed that improperly stored oxygen canisters caught fire. Although Sabretech was to blame, who was contracted by ValueJet to handle its company cargo, it was ValueJet's lack of safety precautions that allowed these mistakes through the crack. After the crash, the airline was grounded. It eventually came back, but due to the negative publicity of the crash, passengers were scared of flying with the airline. Later that year, ValueJet quietly merged with AirTran. That airline operated until 2014 when it was bought by Southwest. As tragic and disgusting ValueJet's tale is, it serves as a reminder to never put profit over lives. Looking back at history, putting profit over lives always led to tragedies. ValueJet is one of the many tales of greed costing lives. But the thing is, even in an industry like air travel, even there, greed never really kills people. Even the greediest airlines still put safety over money. Because even from a profit-making perspective, having your planes be safe is good because they cost millions, even second-hand ones. And losing them would be a significant blow to an airline. Sure, People get thrown off of planes because of high plane client needed a seat or a dog gets into a wrong plane and uh, ends up at the wrong destinations because they put him in the wrong cargo hold for, of, of a wrong airplane. But rarely does greed result in death. Most of the time, greed simply leads to more awful seas and shitty food. That's why to me, value jet stands out. The idea of an airline like a value jet being allowed to fly despite being clearly dangerous even during the 90s, is baffling to me. Let this serve as a reminder that no matter how much financial trouble, no matter how greedy you are, never, ever put money over lives. Because lives are more important than money. Well, there is one last twist in the story that I forgot to say. After the crash, one of the mechanics who worked on the plane ended up becoming a uh, fugitive from the FBI. And now there's a $10,000 reward to find him. As far as anyone knows, he's kind of disappeared. Well, as for the co-founders and CEOs of ValueJet, well, you're not going to believe this. After ValueJet went bankrupt, none of them were prosecuted. Well, you'd think that after this incident, they wouldn't work in the airline industry again, you know? And maybe move on to something less risky. Like, I don't know, a toaster fa fa factory or something. One of the co-founders of Valjet ended up working at Allegiant Air. And now, in 2018, there were a few reports of safety concerns in Allegiant Air. Well, this has been a while, right? I mean... I know I've been a little late and yeah, I mean I've been a little lazy lately. I'll try to upload more videos and try to, you know, not be lazy, but it really depends. So anyways, I really hope you have a good day and well, I, I don't know, have a good day.